Eu sei que você gosta de documentários. Hoje eu trouxe um documentário raríssimo, o primeiro documentário sobre OVNIs feito nos Estados Unidos, depois da vinheta. Olá pessoal, eu sou o Edson Boaventura Júnior, sejam bem-vindos ao canal Enigmas e Mistérios. Uhum. Se você não é inscrito, se inscreva no nosso canal, nos acompanhe aí nas redes sociais. Se gostar desse vídeo, clica no joinha e depois deixe os seus comentários. Hoje a gente está trazendo para vocês aí um documentário raríssimo, é um documentário que foi feito em 1950 nos Estados Unidos, foi o primeiro documentário é, em vídeo sobre OVNI, sobre objetos voadores não identificados. Inclusive nesse documentário tem até o depoimento do Major Donald K. Roy, né, que é um bem conhecido aí da ufologia, um militar que se interessou pelo fenômeno OVNI naquela década de 50 e escreveu também vários livros. Ali. Além dele, existem vários outros depoimentos interessantes e de época desse documentário. O documentário ele é intitulado o mistério do disco voador. A gente está trazendo aí o primeiro documentário de 1950, tem um outro aí que saiu alguns anos depois, a gente vai ver se consegue legendar ele também e trazer aqui para vocês aí como curiosidade. Queríamos agradecer aí ao Rodrigo Moura Visoni que legendou esse documentário aí histórico. Então, sem mais delongas, vamos ver esse interessante documentário. The flying saucer, a 20th century mystery, cannot be ignored. The strange disks have been reported by Hun sober Americans since 1947. Just what did these people see? Man has dreamt of flight, of conquering gravity from ancient times to the present. In imagination, he has traveled the skies in fantastic machines. 50 years ago, this flying saucer was an illustration for H.G. Wells' War of the World. Are the flying saucers things of fantasy? Some say they're natural objects, meteors or bright stars, transformed by imagination into disks of mystery. Others say the saucers are weather balloons, common enough in the sky and easily mistaken for a disk. These theories were checked when the armed forces investigated the flying saucers. Admiral Calvin Bolster of the Navy's Bureau of Aeronautics gives his conclusion. The these balloons might explain isolated cases of circular-shaped, unidentified objects flying at altitudes, uh, extreme altitudes, that have been reported. However, I do not feel that these balloons explain the majority of the so-called flying saucer sightings that have appeared in the press. People saw something, something not a balloon, not a meteor, not a hallucination. Reliable witnesses have sighted them over nearly every major city, along our air lanes, over secret research areas. In True Magazine, Commander Robert McLaughlin, a Navy guided missiles expert, told of flying saucers detected by radar over White Sands, New Mexico. Scientists were trying to rocket, suddenly detected a saucer at 56 miles altitude. Over 100 feet in diameter, the disk was traveling at 1,800 miles per hour, rapidly outranged their instruments. But there had been time for precise, accurate measurements. Says McLaughlin, that saucer could not have been made on Earth. Airline pilots with thousands of hours experience have reported saucers coming within a few hundred feet of their planes, matching speed briefly, and then darting off at supersonic speed, leaving a glowing exhaust trail. Student pilot Arthur Weisberger reports on his experience. My name is Arthur Weisberger. On uh, July 21st in Tucson, Arizona, while out in my backyard, three shiny objects in the sky attracted my attention. I glanced up and there were three flying saucers in a V. Approximately a half a mile away from me at an altitude of 350 feet. They appear to be hovering in midair with uh, what I believe to be a spinning action. The uh, saucers stayed still for approximately 40 seconds and then took off due north horizontally. 
from the dead stop these saucers exceeded a rate of 500 miles an hour for approximately five seconds, still going horizontally due north towards the Santa Catalina Mountains. At the end of five seconds, they uh, went at approximately 45 degrees straight, well, up. They exceeded 1,000 miles an hour until they vanished from sight. They appeared to be 50 feet in diameter with uh, what appeared to be a dome on the top with, I can't be sure, but I believe I saw the sun glinting off of, uh, well, windows or observation, portals of sort. What people saw is revealed clearly by this remarkable international news photo, the first ever taken of a flying saucer. It's one of two pictures made early this year by farmer Paul Trent of McMinnville, Oregon. Enlarged, the photo reveals clearly the familiar disc shape. Trent was able to snap only two photos of the saucer. He estimates the size at about 20 or 30 feet. Says that from a near hovering position when first seen, it accelerated rapidly and vanished from sight in no time at all. Note the control tower in the center, referred to by Weisberger. This enlargement shows it to be vertical compared with the saucer's angle of flight. Sid Mortner, executive editor of International News Photos, comments on these unusual pictures. Our agency refused to release photographs of a purported flying saucer to the newspapers of the country until we could inspect the original negatives. We now have the, the negatives in hand, and I can vouch for the fact that they have not been retouched or faked in any way, and that they are indeed actual photographs of a so-called flying saucer. Latest evidence in the saucer mystery are these exclusive motion picture films from Louisville, Kentucky, the first scenes ever made of a flying saucer. Note the white halo around the saucer, an effect reported by some observers. Slightly irregular in shape, the disc appears to be rotating and to possess a dancing motion against the background. A staff cameraman of TV station WHAS was on routine assignment when he heard a loud whooshing sound overhead. Looking up, he saw the saucer hovering in the sky. After two minutes, the disc accelerated and vanished directly upwards. An investigation revealed no weather balloons aloft at the time. the saucers a U.S. secret weapon? This is officially denied. Here, Admiral Bolster speaks for the Navy. In my position in the Research and Development Organization of the Bureau of Aeronautics and of the Navy Department, I am thoroughly familiar with both our aircraft and our guided missiles programs and can state without reservation that the Navy has no saucer-shaped aircraft or missile in any of these programs. Many authoritative sources, including U.S. News and World Report, have declared otherwise. These sources say the disks are jet craft developed from an experimental Navy fighter of 1945. But only one model of this plane ever flew, says the Navy. Some experts point out that only 30 years ago, rocket development was in this crude state. In two decades, German scientists developed these primitive rockets into the fearsome V-2. No major improvement on the V-2 has been made public since the war, despite intensive research by U.S. engineers in cooperation with German rocket specialists. Are the saucers the secret descendants of the V-2?
The author of this book, Annapolis-trained ex-Marine Major Donald Kehoe, says the saucers are not from this Earth, that they far outperform any craft that man can build today. After one year's investigation, I believe that the flying saucers seen by veteran airline and Air Force pilots are objects from another planet. The Air Force itself has officially admitted that flying saucers exist. This statement appears in Project Saucer Case number 75. Not only that, the Air Force has officially analyzed the motives of possible visitors from space. Here is a direct quotation from the official report. Such a civilization might observe that on Earth we now have atomic bombs and our fast developing rockets. In the past history of mankind, they should be alarmed. We should therefore expect at this time above all to behold such visitations. Agreeing with Kehoe is Commander McLaughlin. From his observations, we the people constructed this model of a flying saucer as it might appear in interplanetary space. Our eyes from another world looking at this scene, a saucer's eye view of our planet filmed at a height of 57 miles. These scenes were made from a remote control army rocket. But today, visitors from space may be studying us from similar heights.